All right, I've set my uh, bottom end, clutch assembled everything off to the side. Uh, another thing that we do in here, whenever I'm doing an engine, I won't do an engine without doing a water pump seal and a bearing. It doesn't make any sense. So uh, we're going to change the water pump seal in here just by removing this little clip. Be careful, these can go flying across the shop. I'm going to pull this whole mechanism apart, get the, uh, get the nut off of here. And what I do with this, you can put a wrench on it, or a lot of times I'll just clamp this right in a vise, and then get on this side and uh, put a little bit of heat to it. It seals, it's going to damage them, but you're changing them anyway. Uh, Loctite on this, red Loctite always. I'm going to assume the guy before me did it, so I'm, you know, I'm going to have a hard time getting it apart if I don't put a little heat to it. So just heat this part of it up for a couple seconds, 10, 15 seconds. It'll get it warm enough to where you'll be able to extract that impeller. Just took the uh, clutch cover out of the ultrasonic cleaner, all nice and spick and span. Took my old seals out and uh, the old bearing out. I have to caution you, when you put this back together, actually even before you take it apart, you have to make note of the direction that these uh, seals go in. It's, it's absolutely critical. If you put them in backwards, they're going to work backwards. You're going to get water in your oil. It's just going to be a mess, you know, vice versa. So make sure you pay attention to how these came out. I'm going to show you how to put it together. And uh, we're going to start with uh, the first seal going into the uh, case from the opposite side. I'll get this flipped around and show you. This is shot inside the clutch cover. The first seal we're going to put in is this one right here, and it's going in this direction into that hole. And the Yamaha part number is 93102-12321. I'm going to wash my hands. I'll be right back. We'll put this together. Well, this is that first seal in where it goes. And in a lot of times, we have special drivers that we use for this. We actually make them if we need them. And uh, I just you know, put it inside the seal and just push it in there until it's flush. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drive the new bearing in. It's right there. And this already comes with uh, some oil on it and actually grease and I'll get that thing put in next. And that's what she looks like. This this bearing almost falls in here. It's a very light press. I'm going to guess probably at less than a half thousandths. And I just used a drift and just uh, went around nice and square and just tap, 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 rooney until that thing sets in, gets uh, where it's supposed to be. Okay, we're ready to throw the actual water pump seal in. Uh, Yamaha part number is 93109-11073. Very important the direction the seal goes in. If you look at it, you get a flat spot on this side. You want that down. And again, we just use uh, just a little pusher. I'm just going to put that on there and put that seal right in there. Done deal. All right, the actual uh, water pump or coolant seal uh, is, is lubed from Yamaha, but if you, you know, a lot of this stuff is relevant to other engines too. Make sure you get some uh, seal grease in there if it doesn't have any. The other seal behind this has no seal grease. I'm just going to use a pick. Put a little on there and just go inside, move it around a little bit. Here's the drive for the impeller. And just make sure when you're looking at this, you can see some marks here. You can't feel it. You shouldn't be able to feel any ridges on this. Um, if you do, you, you're going to develop a leak. So, And be careful when you push this in. This is coming in from this side. And just make sure there's no burrs here. This has a nice chamfer on it. And just make sure you're not going to tear the seal up when you push this in. But this is the next piece that's going in. Went ahead and got my drive unit in, put my uh, clip back on, a little retainer, thrust washer, whatever you want to call it. And then on this side, we're going to install this washer. And then I'm going to put the impeller back on. I want to clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to use red Loctite on the inside of this. And that's where you are. Uh, tighten this up to uh, 10 foot pounds. Back into the bottom end, I'm going to finish doing this. Uh, make sure you put your dowel pins, alignment pins, gudgeon pins, I call them all kinds of different things. And then um, bring the gasket. And again, big fan of Yamaha. It's an OEM Yamaha gasket. I'm going to put the cover on next. We're going to put the governor mechaniz mechanism back into here. Make sure you lube this bearing up on the other side. And you've got a groove in this. My pointer finger is. It goes in this way. And that groove 
has to go onto this bar and then just lower it all in. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but. It's kind of tough to run a camera and do this. I mean, I'm way away from it, but obviously, anything we're doing here, this is an instructional video. I'm trying to give you the best way around this but off camera rest assured everything here is getting rechecked but that's what you want it to do fall right in just like that and what that's going to do is as the engine increases RPMs it's going to move this rod which is going to actually actuate the power valves in the cylinder of the engine next step is to just slide the cover on obviously this camera is right in front of this engine and I'm not going to be able to show you this as I do it but I'll give you a couple of couple of pointers. Make sure the spring for the kickstart hasn't changed. Make sure that that's going to be all right when you put it in. Um, you got your pins in. You've got your gasket in. And then as far as this goes, this cover, just hold this rod down when you're pushing the cover on, and that'll retain the the governor mechanism. Make sure that happens. Water pump's not going to go anywhere. And the only other thing is this gear right here is going to have to mesh with this one. So as you're bringing this cover down, you may have to turn this just a little bit. And this gear is also going to mesh with this. So you may have to also turn the crankshaft. But with all of that in mind, just, you know, don't force anything. That's, I can't stress that enough. And this cover will go right on over all of this. It's another little hint for you. This is the... Uh, the clutch cover, the smaller one, and um, we can put a new Yamaha O-ring on here. And they have these little, they have these little retainers that holds the gasket in. Yeah, right. Um, little hint: just take your Vaseline, same thing, fill that up. That'll hold that gasket right in there. You don't have to worry about it falling out when you assemble it. Put this clutch cover on, and I've just got one bolt in there, very loose. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go after the water pump cover. All right, I went ahead and put my little dowel pins in here. Uh, next step, we're going to use OEM Yamaha gasket. Set that on. Get your water pump cover on. Once you get the cover on, you're going to find when you go through your bolt selection that all these clutch cover bolts, you have three of them that are uber long. Two of them go here, and the other one goes right up here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the bolts in all the way around, and then uh, I can get a pretty good feel. I don't mark bolts, and you don't you don't have to. They all have to stick out the same amount. It's pretty simple, but I'll get all of these bolts where they go, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So in a nutshell, I've got all my bolts in, nothing tight. Um, and again, the, the long bolts are the ones that go through the water pump housing into the case. Get another one here, and uh, the other thing I need to look at is this bolt that holds this water pump cover on. There's a little brass washer under it that has to go there, and everything else is basically there's only two other length bolts. These are a little bit shorter that go in this cover, and everything else in the clutch cover is the same length, and it's all just a little bit longer. So, um, what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to make everything in here finger tight. Just just bottom it out and that's it. No tension on it and I'll show you what we do after that. Got all my bolts bottomed out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on whatever bolt is holding down the large clutch cover. So in other words, these are all dummy bolts. These don't go in uh, through to the case. This one does and so do these. Those are, those are the bolts that I'm going to concentrate on. So in other words, I'm going to start here, go directly across, here, here. I'm just going to make a big X pattern. I'm going to start from the inside. I'm going to work my way out, crisscross, going all the way across, not focusing on the minor bolts, I'll call them, the, just to hold this cover to the, uh, to the clutch cover. I'm concentrating on bringing the clutch cover down to the center cases and torque seven and a half foot pounds you're fine got this engine flipped around next thing I'm gonna do is put this uh, neutral switch back together and I'm just gonna drop that spring in there little nub and then throw the cover back on it and get the screws tightened up 
We're all set with that device. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is start putting all these OEM seals in for the uh, counter shaft, the shift shaft, and the crank seal. If you're, if you're wondering why I do this last, I just it, it makes me feel a lot better. I know where these springs are going, and more importantly, where they're not going. Um, it is a very distinct chance if you install seals first, especially here, you don't want it to happen here, that that spring can come dislodged or damaged, and you won't even know it. Um, so this is just one another way we prevent ourselves from chasing our own asses. Uh, so that's why I put the seals in last. I'm going to go ahead and install uh, crank seal, counter shaft, and the ship shaft. Got all my seals in. I actually, what you didn't see is I put the uh, seal for the kicker in too while I was getting them in. Um, there's an O-ring that goes in here on the counter shaft. There's a Yamaha part number 22298. Uh, make sure you put that in and then you put your wear ring in after that. Here's the wear ring. Little chamfer side. Goes down. And just inspect here. Make sure you don't have any grooves in it. You get big grooves. These are cheap. Just buy another one. But this one's going to be fine. And again, we greased all of the inner lips of these seals with the PC seal grease. Next, I'm going to install the stator. I'm going to put a little bit, and I mean a little bit, of 1104 case bond behind, uh, behind this rubber grommet just to get it to seal. And then your timing mark is down here. I like to advance these just a little bit, and I mean just a little bit, advancing and turning clockwise. Uh, and just a little bit, I mean just the other side of that line. And I'm going to go ahead and get the screws in, and I'll show you how to put the flywheel on after that. And there's my timing mark right here, and that's the, I said a little bit of advance, and that's, that's where I'm putting it. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, little impact driver. I'm going to smack these heads a couple times, just really lightly, just get them tightened up. I really don't trust these, I uh, call them butter bolts, but I'm going to use that impact to get them, get them down there a little harder. I'm going to install a flywheel next, and just, just put your finger in here, feel around, make sure there's no burrs in there. If you find burrs, um, it, what's going to happen is it's going to... Uh, it's going to snap the key, and it's going to loosen up on it, and it's probably going to happen during the biggest race of your life. So what you can do is if you feel any burrs here or on the crankshaft, just remove the key. Do it long before you do this. Um, remove the key and take a little bit of really fine grit lapping compound. Just take the, take the flywheel, start going like this, and that will knock all those burrs down and give you a good, good surface to stick on between the crank and the flywheel. We're going to uh, put a little bit of blue Loctite on the nut. And if you're looking for the torque on this nut, it's kind of a pain. It's not in the, in the manual with a lot of the other torque specs where you would expect to find it. It's actually under electrical, and they call this a rotor. Uh, the uh, torque on this nut is 40 foot-pounds. Next up, we've got our bottom end. I'd say pretty much completely done. Uh, you know, minuscule, anything else that has to get done in there. Uh, we're going to put the top end together. I may or may not make a part three on this and, and show that, but right now uh, I am going to film it. And um, this is a... 2013 YZ250 